Alors, euh, merci beaucoup, euh, Etsy. Ça me fait plaisir euh, de revenir euh, dans mon euh, passé euh, ici à l'Université d'Avant pour euh, vous présenter euh, Raphaël Calaman, qui est euh, chercheur à l'INIAM. Il a fait ses études à l'Université de Polytechnique de Madrid, en foresterie, en génie forestier. Après quoi, il a entamé euh, sa profession d'ingénieur forestier en opération forestière pour finalement euh, voir la lumière et aller en recherche où il a fait euh, ses études euh, doctorales pour ensuite euh, rentrer à l'INIAR comme chercheur. Et donc, il est ici pour euh, présenter un peu les travaux qui ont lieu à l'INIAR sur euh, les pinèdes et l'effet du climat changeant sur euh, les pinèdes. Merci beaucoup. Euh, merci à tous. Euh, pour, alors, au début, je vais vous remercier de d'être ici ce, ce soir. Je vais remercier à l'Université de Laval, le Centre de, de la Forêt, pour avoir me donné l'opportunité de partager avec, avec vous ce, ce travail qu'on fait maintenant dans, dans la forêt de, de l'Epine, à le nord de l'Espagne. Et, et c'est le, le travail d'une équipe en coopération parmi le, le, le lieu où je travaille, que c'est l'Institut national de la recherche agronomique avec le gouvernement, euh, le ministre, le, le gouvernement de, de, de la région de Castilla. Euh, je dois m'excuser, je dois faire la, la, la présentation de ce séminaire en anglais, parce que sinon je crois que ça sera pour vous vraiment difficile d'entendre ce que je vais vous, vous expliquer. So, I, I must, I'm going to change the, the language uh, now. So, I'm going to present you today uh, this... Uh, this work on uh, what is the, the current and expected effects of the uh, changing climate on, on, on our time boots and what are the, the proposals for adaptive management that what we are covering now. Uh, let me start by a small overview of about uh, what are the Spanish forests. I don't know if you are very familiar with the size of, of my country. Uh, I must, you must forgive me, I have not found a, a, a map comparing the size of Spain with Canada, so I have uh, prepared a map comparing Spain with the States, but I think you are familiar with, with your southern neighbors. So uh, Spain is, uh, for the standard, uh, for the European standards, is quite a large country. We are uh, 500,000 uh, square kilometers for your standard is uh, a medium or a small size uh, province. And uh, the, I think that, uh, of course, I'm forester, I'm, do the, I'm doing uh, research in forestry, so I'm coming here for uh, talk about forests, but I think that the uh, main part of the people is not aware uh, about uh, if uh, really Spain is a forestry country or not, uh, you know we are receiving every year hundreds or, or millions of tourists. And if you ask them uh, after visiting us uh, for the positive things they have seen on, on Spain, and sure they will mention perhaps about the nice food or, or our fiestas, uh, the theaters, uh, nice ancient monuments, or even the, the football uh, team or many other things, even the, our shops. But uh, what about the forest? I don't think that it's only a, a matter of the tourists that are coming. I think if you are going to ask many part of the Spanish people if Spain is a forestry country, they will say no. But the real uh, thing is that we are a forest country. Here you can see this is a forest map of, of Spain. So uh, green, uh, different green uh, tones. You can see uh, either the conifers or, or the broad leaves. But in fact, it's uh, that 18 million, 18 million hectares in our country, that is about one third, more than one third part of our area, is occupied by forest. But for the European standards, a forest is uh, a forest land with a crown cover to over 20%. In addition, we have another 9 million hectares, hectares of non 
forest forest lands that are considered forest land that are shrub lands or forests with uh, crown cover to be below 20%. In any case, behind uh, Sweden are Finland that are countries with a much more tradition of forestry, of, of knowledge of the forest. We are uh, the third country in surface. And we have recently increased this, this area. Perhaps the problem is linked with this, but sorry. It's our low standing volume. Okay, our uh, forests are low stocking. Uh, our mean average volume is 50 cubic meters per hectare, with uh, quite low uh, current annual increment and quite low uh, annual timber production, you, you can see here. But it's also important to mention that uh, we have a great tradition of production of non-wood forest products, like the cork or pine nuts uh, or resin that I will mention today. I want to show you that we have uh, quite uh, great variability of ecosystems due to the great variability of climate we can find and, and topography we can find on Spain. But, uh, starting by the north, uh, this is the, uh, the unique area of, of Spain. Uh, we can find the, the, the most productive area, or high productive plantations of, of eucalyptus that are, or pinus radiata that are shaded in the territory with uh, natural oak uh, forests. Or also the um, alpine landscape and alpine forests in the Pyrenees. Or uh, the extent, uh, the thick extensions of pine forests through all the mountains that are in the inner part of, of Spain or in the eastern uh, mountains with uh, Pinus silvestris, Pinus uh, pinaster, uh, Pinus pinea or Pinus alepensis and also uh, highly degraded cope, uh, copies of, of oak. And finally, uh, in the southern part, uh, the typical agroforestry system that is, are, the, are the, uh, the oak forest, the cork oak forest, and uh, with state territory with uh, coastal pines that are uh, fixing the dunes, or even with really arid, uh, arid uh, zones. I'm going to focus my talk today in uh, our study area that is the Spanish Northern Plateau. It's a flat area uh, located in the inner north part of Spain. Here is Madrid, you can see. It occupies the basin of the River Duero. River Duero goes from here and it, it's going uh, to enter into the sea uh, crossing Portugal. So this is a flat area with an altitude between 600 and 900 meters. Uh, for our standards, it's uh, less habitated. There are a low density of population. And uh, it's mainly uh, occupied by the administrative region of Castilla Leon. Castilla, I don't know if you are familiar with, with our stories, the ancient kingdom of uh, which was the origin of, of, the, of the Spain, of the Spanish country. And this is mainly an agricultural land. So the name in Spanish is Tierra de Campos. Tierra de Campos means uh, land where people are having farms and uh, with this type of with cereal or mainly uh, rented uh, crops. So this is the typical uh, landscape of our, of our land. So our, for our standard, uh, you can see it's a fragmented patches of pine woods uh, surrounded by rented crops and uh, it's really a, a fragmented a structure uh, it's, again, I see that the main difference, or one of the main difference between Spain and Canada, are the, the, the dimensions, the size of uh, the size of everything here. Everything is larger. For us, a big patch is a patch of six thousand hectares of of forest. I think that for you, six thousand hectares of forest is a real a small a small patch. And it's a region that has suffered a severe process of deforestation, starting by the Middle age up to the 19th century, with, with a, a strong uh, artificial and natural recovery even in the last century. Now it's the moment for the propaganda of my institution and try to explain why are, why are we doing this uh, research on this on this region. I work here. This is the in, uh, the building of the National Center for Forest Research that belongs to the National Institute for Research in Agronomy. That whose uh, attributions are the research on agricultural, animal production, food technology, and, and also, of course, uh, forestry. Well, you can see that uh, here we have snow, 
five centimeters of snow, it's our largest uh, snow gang at every year, <laughs> also a difference with, with you. And uh, we are a national center, but the problem that I'm sure that you are really familiar with it here is that uh, Spain nowadays is a highly regionalized country and the main attributions on forest management, uh, forest management but also on research on forestry belongs to the regions. So what are we doing in a national center when the regions have their attributions? It's true that in Spain, research in forest and agriculture it's, uh, go uh, really together. And that many of the regions where the main important uh, issues of agriculture, they don't have own uh, research institute focusing on forestry. So we do some kind of cooperation with these regional forest services. Also, we carry some kind of uh, co uh, coordination of the research programs focusing on, on forestry. And we also did uh, research on the forest belong or managed managed by the uh, national government. I think it's what you call here the federal government, that are the national parks and the national forests. And also we do the research advice to the agricultural ministry. That means that they need uh, to have a computation of how many carbon stocks we have in the soil of the forest uh, for this year, and you have to do it in, for the next uh, week. So that's the most uh, stressful part. Within this cooperation, we cooperate mainly, uh, one of the regions where we cooperate uh, mostly is Castilla Leon, this, this region where we have a trad uh, ancient tradition of cooperation. In, uh, they participate in our research project. In fact, they uh, give us some kind of advice and uh, ask us about the necessities they, do, uh, they, they, they require for daily forest management. And they participate in the projects, and we participate with them in different uh, transference uh, activities, the function of, of knowledge, many course for, for, for foresters uh, how to decide which trees to cut, or uh, publishing guidelines in, in Spanish that is easy to understand for the, for the, for the foresters. And a brief overview about the, the Spanish, uh, the, the, our study area. Concerning the climate, uh, here you can see this is the mean. Pardon. This is the mean annual rainfall. Uh, it's not possible that you can see, but I will say you, and you must trust on me that this color is that the annual rainfall is below 400. And our study area is this. Okay, so uh, we are having an annual rainfall below 400 millimeters, with heavy potential ev evapotranspiration, resulting in an uh, extreme aridity. So here it's an uh, aridity index, that is the uh, annual rainfall divided by the potential by transpiration. And here we are over values of 0 0.5. That means that the potential evapotranspiration of our territory is twice the annual amount of, of rainfall. With, with respect to the temperatures, concerning the maximum daily temperature, you can see that during the month of July, we can reach this is over this is over 30 over 30 35 on this area we can reach daily temperatures over 35 at maximum but we also have some freezing days not much but uh, over 100 days per year we are having temperatures below zero so we are having two vegetative periods of, of growing that is a spring and four seasons during summer and winter we are not having this growth period and for, for ending this, the, the, the hard panorama of the region, we have very low quality soils with a high content of sandy and very low content of organic matter. This is the typical uh, image of our soils. Uh, we have forests in this area, of course, if not, I will not be here. But it's a main agricultural area, so you can see this is one of the provinces, uh, Valladolid, it's the inner part of, of the northern plateau where 20% of the territory is occupied by forests. You can see here over 800,000 hectares, 100,050. That mainly are for pine forests with two species. Pinus pinea, the Mediterranean stone pine, is famous because it's the pine producing the pine nuts, or the pino or pinones or pinoli in Italian. That is quite an edible uh, seed. 
and Pinus Pinaster, um, maritime pine or, or resin pine. And mixed forests of both species, and also mixed forests with other broad leaves, mainly uh, Quercus uh, ilex and Quercus facilia. These uh, Quercus forests are uh, highly degraded, they have been traditionally used for food wood, so are copies uh, nowadays, are mainly copies. Focusing on the two main species, the pinus I have told you uh, that is uh, important the joint cone and timber production. Here you can see the, the pine nuts, the final production. So, in order to promote this uh, joint production, what we are having are low dense forests uh, with base of area below 15 millimeter, 15 square meters per hectare, and focusing always in pure and even age uh, forests with a very intensive uh, management. So the most relevant thing is uh, that these forests, the annual income that all forest owners are receiving, is much more important the part they are receiving from the cone production than from the from the timber. The other forest is the uh, resin pine or maritime pine forest, where we have a quite similar objective of production of or joint production of timber and, and resin. We have denser forests. Uh, here the basal area is about 25 square meters per hectare, but also with a really intensive silviculture, focusing on pure and even age stands. In this case, timber is still the most important product. Okay? So I have given you a short overview of what are the forests and what is our territory, and uh, now I have to start to talk about climate. In our territory, it's not necessary to to think on what is going to happen with the climate, because we are, have already suffering the climate change. If you see, this is a, a series of annual mean temperature. Here is the uh, anomalies with respect to the average value, that is 12 degrees. So what we can see the last 45 years is that there has been a real increment of mean annual temperature. Okay. This means that in this period, uh, mean annual temperature was about 12 or 11.5, and nowadays we are over 13 degrees. With the last year, the past year, 2017, the warmer year in the story. And this is evident and uh, more relevant in the maximum daily temperatures during spring. So I have mentioned you before, spring is the uh, period where we are having the most important uh, growth period, the vegetative period for the species. So higher temperatures mean higher potential evapotranspiration, so uh, 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 more relevant uh, aridity in the territory. And we, with respect to the rainfall, it is true that we are not having a, a clear trend, but what we are observing is that this is the same, the anomalies with respect to the mean series, that is 440 millimeters. We see that the irregularity is much more relevant in this period, in the recent period, than in the older period. And what is really important is that we have a high frequency of extreme dry, dry years. For us, an extreme dry year is a year with an annual rainfall of 300 or between 300 and 350 millimeters. And another issue is the extreme hot days. These were the maximum temperature. It's over 35 degrees that are very important because it's uh, when there is a high risk of fires. That is all the, all the problems we are facing in in our territory, there is a clear increase in trend in these recent years. Again, the past year was extremely hot, as it was common in all Europe. It's true that it's not only in our country, but also in Europe. So after this panorama, it's not very difficult to, to imagine what, what are forecasting the project. You know, so I'm not entering in, in C, but these are the projections for the change of, of the temperatures. And uh, I think it's only to mention these are uh, what the most uh, dramatic, the, the, the redder the color, the higher the, the increment in the temperature. This is for the end of our uh, of this uh, century. That is the, the most optimistic scenario. The, the rest are uh, forecasting a, a great increment in the temperature, perhaps three or four degrees uh, uh, in the mean annual temperature, and also for the uh, annual rainfall. In this case, red color is. The expected decrease, uh, the redder, the, the larger the expected decrease in, in annual rainfall. For our territory, there are also specific projections for the for the northern plateau. This is for the case for the annual rainfall, where we can observe that the forecasting what predict is a decreasing trend, 
but again, an increment of the, of the variability and a real increment of the frequency of severe sunlight drops. If we are falling from 300 or 350 to 250, this is already an added climate. So it's really difficult to, to be able to maintain a forest under these extreme dry conditions. So we expect that we are not reaching this, these values. We hope so. And the same for the temperature, they are expected uh, uh, special uh, higher larval increments, especially during the temperature in the spring. So this will affect really the both the incrementing potential, uh, the potential evapotranspiration and more frequent uh, hot waves. Hot hot waves. Okay, after after showing you what are uh, the expected projection of climate and the current observed uh, change in the climate. I will show you that we are already uh, identifying some impacts in, in, in our forest. The first and perhaps one of the most uh, relevant impacts is uh, that we are observing a generalized process of decay and dieback in our climates, especially in uh, Pinus pinus, in maritime pine, where it's probably generalized. What we observe is a generalized uh, lack of vigor a process of defoliation, def defoliation decoloration, uh, and uh, loss of terminal shoots, and by the end the, the tree uh, died. In the case of, of maritime pine, what we, we observe this process at a great scale in large patch, patches, and in the case of uh, spin of the stone pine, we observe it in isolated trees, but it's uh, quite well. I would like to show you this photo. This is in uh, Mediterranean stone pine in Spinia Forest. It's also in one, it's also in an 11, where it's not difficult to identify the uh, progress of this decay. This is more evident following a dry period, but it's continuous. Every year, you will find that it's spreading this, this, this decay. It's not only an, an effect of climate. This is important that not everything is uh, due to the climate. In this case, there is an interaction with pathogens, with uh, bark beetles, and also with uh, uh, lack of management and extreme aging of the, of the forest. But uh, it's, it's real evident in, in this region. What we are trying to do, we are not uh, specialists in, patho in pathogens or entomology, so this is due to other groups. What we are trying is to identify if there are any factors uh, defining the vulnerability of the resistance or the resistance of our model and try to model the, of our inputs and try to model the probability of, of, of this decay. We are working at different scales. At the, larger, at the, the largest scale, we are using the, the data from the annual statistics of policy cutting, so the Forest Service. What they have to do is cut this tree every year, so there is a uh, um, a report where they indicate in which area, in which management unit, and how many timber they have extracted due to this decay. So we can use it to identify the most vulnerable areas. We are also uh, are working at uh, an intermediate scale using our permanent plots. And uh, at a small scale, we are sampling uh, pilot trees. There is an example of damage in a healthy tree try to identify by means of, of increment cores or the analysis of, of uh, uh, nutrients or water use efficiency, if there are differences in the past behavior of the damage or the, 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 the damaged trees with respect to the healthy trees in order to identify if there are some kind of factor uh, increasing the vulnerability. Another problem that we are facing nowadays is the lack of natural regeneration. In, in these pine woods. Here you can see this is a uh, work done over an extensive net of 3,000 plots to the territory. Uh, th there are areas where uh, regeneration felling have taken, uh, have been done in 2001. So we expect to have this uh, area re regenerated in the next 15 years. So here you can see that there are 70% uh, of of areas where we have not found, this is our elderly sample, we have not found regeneration 
in a year. That uh, there are 82 percent were of, of plots where we have identified regeneration, mainly of Phenospinia. But the problem is that when we are trying to identify in the last year in, 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 in which percentage of the plots that has been really established these, these regenerations or these regeneration has been successful, we see that 65% of the territory, the regeneration has failed, so has not been regenerated at all, and that the pinus pinaster has mainly disappeared. There is not a regeneration of these species. We find high rates of seedling mortality and large gaps with where regeneration does not occur at all. What we have tried to do is try to identify the bottlenecks. And for doing this, what we are doing is modeling the probability of regeneration, thinking that the regeneration is a, a multi etapic process. So we are studying uh, independently the fruiting process, the dispersal, dispersal process, uh, seed germination, uh, pre predation by plant post dispersal predation, and uh, uh, survival during the summer. So it's quite an intensive work that has to be carried during many years. And what we have uh, found is that uh, there are different uh, bottlenecks in, in the regeneration. As I have mentioned you before, uh, not everything is climate, but every, uh, the least main part of the things are related or aggravated by, by climate. As I have mentioned you before, our um, uh, Pinus pinia forest, they are maintained at very low density in order to promote uh, comb production. So there are real huge gaps in the, in the forest. So when we aim to regenerate it, there are places where the total amount of, seed, of seeds that are arriving there is quite low. But in the past period, uh, that a small number of, of seeds was quite enough. But nowadays, these seeds are arriving but the, even so they are germinating, there, are, there is a high rate of uh, summer mortality. Also, what we have found is a clear control over fruiting process, over seed germination. Here you can see this is uh, the probability of germination in relation with temperature. So we are nowadays here. In the future, the forecast we will be here, so the rates of germination will be quite... Uh, quite lower, and also over seedling survival. Here is one of the works we have done. This is the trying to identify the photostatical uh, activity of the, of the seedlings. So these are the extreme, uh, the days with extreme temperature during summer. This is the net assimilation, so it's below zero, and this is the probability of uh, capitation by drought. So. This period is really uh, dramatic for the seedling survival, and what we expect is, is that this period will be enlarged in the future. For the Pinus pinaster, it's quite simple. What they have seen is that the main uh, bottleneck is seedling, uh, summer seedling survival. Here you can see this is the current scenario, this is the rate of seedling survival, and irrespective of the management we are doing, probably in the future, they will be really difficult to. Uh, regenerate these species. Also, we observe uh, losses of productivity. Uh, of course, in the uh, annual growth, in our case, it's not uh, limited by by temperature, but by uh, rainfall. And we have even identified this is a uh, recent work, where we have identified a uh, change in site index class. So, what we expect for the future, it's a several reduction in the site index so in the productivity of timber on in the in, in the pine woods. What we are trying to do is uh, try to use uh, empirical and process-based models in order to determine which is the real impact of, of climate in the current state of the forest, in the future, in the future mm -hmm. state on the forest, and try to identify if there are some uh, management activities that we can do and we can forecast how they are going to work in, uh, in the future climate scenarios. And all, also we are trying to identify if there are some factors that will increase the resistance and the resilience of our forest in relation with the composition of the forest, the current competition, or the age. 
I have mentioned you before that the comb production is one of the main products of these forests. There is a rich uh, uh, comb production is largely related with climate, with uh, annual rainfall, especially in spring precipitations. And what we observe here is the annual series of production. There is somewhat a significant reduction in the last years. And apart, we have observed uh, the effect of, of, of uh, recent effect of exotic, pe exotic pests. This is uh, a Canadian <laughs> visitor that we have is the Western Sea uh, back, uh, Selectoglossus occidentalis, in Western Conifer Sea back that is uh, uh, feeding over the, the, the pine nuts. Our uh, effort is focused to, to uh, include this uh, production within our empirical and process-based models and identify which climate factors are affecting this production. We also expect uh, several seeds and vegetation. Here are some photos. These are the current state of many uh, pinaster forests, maritime pine forests, where they are being substituted by Pinus pinea and by uh, Juniperus species. But also Pinus pinea is being substituted or moved by more resistant to, to dry Corpusilex or Juniperus to be found. What we are trying to do is to identify uh, mainly in these forests, the other species are apart from Pinus pinea or Pinus, or Pinus pinaster has been completely ignored if not eliminated, because it was thought that they were going to uh, compete with the, the pine forest, with this, the main uh, dominant species. What no, we are trying to do now is if these other species are better adapted than our pinus species to our uh, to the current and, uh, and expected conditions. And so for do, we are analyzing the different traits of the inter and intra annual growth by means of these dendrometers. We are carrying out uh, physiological studies uh, of, of the physiological response of these species at uh, different stages from the seedling and sapling to the um, trees. And we are carving these other current conditions uh, and also with this type of, of uh, uh, structures to simulate uh, a reduction of, of precipitation. I don't know if you hear are quite common in Europe. Nowadays, there are many countries or many research institutes that are using this type of, of experiments. And we aim to define which is the for, to, to forecast which will be the optimal forest composition for the future, under the future scenarios. Another problem that we are having uh, related with pests, I, I'm not expert on pests at all, so I will only mention you that we are observing real change in life cycles and phenology of this species. This is the uh, pine caterpillar, Taumetopea pitiocampa, that nowadays is starting to have two cycles every year, where likely uh, the, in the past it was only one, one, one cycle. And we also find that in the future, the conditions will be better for the exotic test. The Western Conifers is back, for example, for the comb production, or the pine nut. So I have shown you what is uh, our region, what is the current climate, the expected climate, what are the observed impacts and probably the expected impacts. And I will try to show you uh, the research lines that we are doing in cooperation with the Forest Service of Castilla León in order to adapt our forest to climate change. Understanding that the adaptation of climate change is try to adjust, adjust our natural system, our forest, in response to the current or the expected uh, climate uh, impacts on the effects. So we have different options. The autonomous options is leave the forest uh, defend by themselves. And of course, they will do, uh, they have been doing this during million, millions of, of years. But the problem is that we are always focusing in, in our country, uh, we have a really managed oriented forest. So we have always an objective of, for the forest. Let me timber, comproduction, landscape, grazing, 
or recreation, but we are, have always a, an objective. And perhaps the natural evolution of the forest and the, the current, the, the new conditions will not, do not lead the forest to our requirements. This is, of course, a real anthropogenic view of the, of the nature, but it's how, how we work. And the other options are the human intervention. Uh, it can be reactive, so we are detecting the impact and we'll try to respond to the impact, or planet, that is anticipatory. So which are going to be the expected impacts in the future? So we try to program in advance what is going to, to happen. And our aim is try to focus on, on this planet adaptation. Uh, I, in Spain, or I think in Europe in general, we are really, for us, it's really important for the policy, have everything in very nice projects, very nice books, very nice programs, very nice projects. Also, many times, uh, in many occasions, it's very difficult to translate this into the real common practice. But we have this uh, national plan for adaptation to climate change that we have in the National Office for the Climate Change. So we have a lot of institutions uh, aware about climate change. And what they aim to do is to adapt, uh, integrate the adaptation to climate change in the management of the forest sector, in the management of the forest, but also in the management of the forest industry. And uh, in the case of the, of the management of the forest, what we aim is uh, to adapt the forest to the new conditions in order to favor the own capacity of the forest to face the, the expected climate, but also reduce the risk of occurrence of the most vulnerable, uh, the most the, of the processes which are uh, leading to a large vulnerability of the forest, increase the resilience and the resistance, and of course, we are doing every, all these things aiming to warranty the provision of ecosystem services or the objective of our management. And uh, as a resume, what we do is try to include the adaptation to climate change in the objective for the sustainable forest management uh, framework. First, we have to do is uh, try to convince people that uh, if these are the optimal current conditions, perhaps in the future, we will uh, this condition will not be possible in any case. But uh, the reality is that without adaptation, perhaps we are going to this uh, state and with, uh, without adaptation, sorry. Why, if we carry a planet adaptation, we can maintain this state? Perhaps it's not so favorable uh, as this one, but uh, it's not good enough for our requirements and also for the maintenance of the forest. So it's not to perpetuate the system, but it's try to attain the state of the forest that is uh, compatible with the new conditions or with the forecast new conditions, and that is still providing uh, the larger amount of, of these services. And there are a few principles that are which are leading our, our practice. In Europe, as I have mentioned to you, we have a real uh, intensive management with a lot of information. So we have information at different spatial scales, starting for European nets, uh, going for national forest inventory, uh, forest management inventories, research, uh, forestry research inventories. So all this, uh, all this uh, information is uh, at different scales and is not used uh, together. So our aim is try to harmonize all this information and don't uh, try to search for new things, but use all these uh, sources of information as a tool for monitoring the impacts the, over the forest. Because uh, the main principle is that the management should be based on the expected or the observed and the expected impacts. So in our case, the service forces of Castilla Leon is making a real effort in uh, synthesizing all this information and harmonizing. A second principle is try to uh, have a quite flexible, anticipatory and localized forest management. 
seem perhaps is a bit uh, what I have been talking with Robert all these weeks, all uh, these days. It's a bit uh, uh, different. Uh, what happens here in Spain? We have an intensive management where uh, the management planning for a typical forest. A typical forest unit is uh, 1,000 hectares. So you have a book for each forest where it's mentioned what you have to do in the next years. The book, the project is the, manager, the management plan. It's uh, projected for uh, 10 years, but you have uh, uh, an idea of how the, for the forest should look like in the next 50 or even 100 years. So it's quite rigid. And the problem is that on many occasions, uh, the future scenarios will not be compatible with, with this planning is defined nowadays. So uh, what we aim is to make more general the use of uh, models and decision support systems to support the, the forest management. And in this uh, line, what we have uh, been doing is try to uh, uh, fit or construct different spatial scale models, uh, different type of models, focusing uh, on uh, uh, sens sensitive to climate and management. So we can identify which will be the optimal management for the future scenarios. Of course, we are not going to indicate this is the optimal management. So we will propose a set of potential management that will be compatible with the future uh, scenarios. This has resulted in a new management schedule, which uh, mainly are based on, on more intense and early things to prevent a uh, dry and an extended retention length, which uh, are all these ideas are synthesized in different tools as uh, guidelines or uh, web applications for aging forest managers. Another thing that we have to change is that we have to emulate the natural processes. If this is a pine forest, but the regeneration is unitous, and you are making a huge effort to regenerate pine here, and what you are obtaining is uniperus, perhaps this is not going to be more a pine wood, and this will be a uniperus forest. In this sense, for example, we have tried to identify identify if uh, there are a difference in the adaptive capacity of the species due to the provenance, because we are trying to identify if there are a given provenance that is more resistant, so perhaps we can move not only the, the provenance, but also for the different species. So for a given area, perhaps the current provenance or the current uh, genetic uh, chart is not so adapted to the new conditions, but we can find uh, another provenance that is better adapted to these new conditions. This is quite a theoretical because in the practice, the policy um, in Europe or in the forest uh, management in Europe or in Spain does not allow this change of provenance currently, but perhaps in the future this will be uh, required. Also, we another principle is try to diversify the forest to have more uh, options compatible with the future scenarios. I think I have mentioned before that the current the traditional management of these pine woods has been oriented to pure even age forests, and the other species have been really eliminated. What we have tried to to do is uh, to analyze if this uh, more heterogeneous uh, forest, a mixed forest or uh, irregular and even aged forest, are more resistant to, to the new conditions. And what we have find is that there is a, uh, an, a positive effect of the, of the mixture over the growth, in, especially in dry years. Uh, you can see the, the bars are the annual rainfall, and uh, following a dry year, mixed forest have better ability for growing that that new forest. And we also have identified that the main part of the uh, we call secondary species or complementary species are better adapted to the new future conditions. And also that the uneven nature structures are better for recovery after extreme drought than the, than the pure climates. 
We also aim to extend this heterogeneity at different spatial scales. Again, this is a completely different uh, spatial scales. This is a typical uh, for zoom, 1,000 hectares, where we aim to have, a, we propose to have different intensities of management, some kind of, of patch of intensities of, of management at, at the moment, trying to uh, be able to have a wide range of, of different uh, of compatible scenarios. Uh, finally, final principle is focused on, on promote the individual resistance of the, of the trees to the, uh, facing the, the most likely impact. In this sense, for example, we have carried some experiments on, on the application of early thinnings. Traditional thinning, uh, it's known at uh, 40, 40 years old. And what we have identified is that this uh, thinning, uh, when, when you are going to apply it, is quite light. There is a huge effect of the interaction between com uh, competition and drought. So you will find a lot of uh, dead wood or uh, decay, decay uh, or tree sowing symptoms of, of decay. So we propose and anticipate uh, heavy thinning, and we are obtaining better response in growth, uh, in phenology, in good production. While in the control, the system following the, the traditional thinning, what we have are, are identifying our genolysis processes of, of the guy. Concerning the natural regeneration, we have uh, started to practice some kind of more gradual uh, final cuttings. So, if traditionally the system was some kind of two step prior cutting, we are moving through the gradual centric uh, system. Where, where, where we start from a higher density, so we, we cannot have these lower densities to the cycle to promote home production. But uh, we are uh, having a more uh, gradual uh, uh, cuttings in order to, to liberate the, the seedlings. Here you can see how it's the typical image of the, uh, the seedling below the crowns. And uh, this is, they are signaling this tree for being cut in the next, in the next cutting. Here you can see the the difference between the initial system and the current system. This is quite a, a, an outlier, but it's really, uh, we are taking this figure over 1,000 student inspector that is correct. It is considered a quite a good framework. Uh, and also, for example, in the case of afforestation, we are aiming to create more favorable microhabitats. In Spain, there has been a huge process of afforestation starting by the 40s that was stopped uh, by the early 80s and in the 90s started again uh, a program of afforestation in, in farmer lands, in former uh, farmlands. And uh, the focus is try, although it's much more expensive, try to uh, put the, the seedling, uh, the plants, in the better conditions as possible. If you have to use shelters, you have to use specialized machinery or even irrigation, this is quite expensive but it's much more expensive to have a plant every year because you are not attaining this regeneration. So, I have uh, only for ending a few final remarks. Uh, it's not mine or not of our system, but it, it's the general thinking that we are having in, in Spain nowadays that it is possible to adapt our forests. It's not easy, but uh, what is uh, it's really <coughs> necessary, and we have to do it in a sort time if we want to be successful. Well, what is the, the problem? And I think that here uh, I have learned these, these days that at uh, Quebec uh, you are working or Canada in general are working different. Nowadays we have uh, attempt to make a successful work between um, researchers and forest managers. But uh, we are failing to integrate the other stakeholders within the, the sector. So uh, forest managers are still retaining the uh, uh, capacity of decision of what to do. Forest management is covered by the regional services and forest owners are mainly, uh, they are public, they are owned by the municipalities. So there is a huge uh, uh, controversy between owners and forest managers. 
and also, of course, the industry, is, it's uh, not uh, mainly on many occasions considered, they have their own uh, objective, so sometimes uh, it's very difficult to, to integrate. I, I have uh, heard that here you have this kind of participatory management for coming the decisions, and I think this would be a, a nice idea. So this is what, what I wanted to talk about uh, our pine forests. Of course, it's not only my work, it's the work of a huge team working at, uh, not only at the area, but different uh, institutions or the forest services, regional and national forest services. And, and thank you very much for, for your attention. Are there any questions? Thank you very much. I, I was wondering, thinking in the system of um, adaptation, uh, when we focus mm -hmm. on adaptive uh, some species, I was wondering how could it affect uh, to other species, as for example animals, or family, or the ecosystem in general? Yeah, that, that, that is true. Uh, one I have not mentioned, because this is not my line of, of research, but one of the principles uh, is uh, not manage forest, but manage ecosystems. So uh, we have to take into account uh, all these, all these, pro pro all these problems. In general, it's considered that, for example, for the for the for the animals, for the wild animals, the proposed new structures that are more close to the nature. The, the problem in, in in Europe in general, in Spain in particular, is that we are really far from the natural state of the forests. We have been, I don't know if the word is suffering, but we have had an ancient tradition of uh, human intervention over the forest uh, since the time of the Romans, and two year, 2,000 years ago. So we have now a very intensive um, managed forest. These uh, new proposals for some of the species are even more, more favorable. Uh, the maintenance, for example, of different uh, 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 transforming the even nature stands in an even nature stands or more regular maintaining large old trees is quite favorable for example for for uh, as nest of birds or habitat for different insects but in any case for example uh, uh, this uh, I have mentioned you uh, the topic of assisted migration of including new provenances or uh, new genotypes within the territory nowadays is completely forbidden because it should be analyzed in in all these, in all these uh, uh, taking into account all these considerations of the rest of the species. And for the, for the other forest species, uh, these new trends of maintaining uh, these uh, uh, accompanying species, well, traditionally they were either ignored or in any case removed directly. But now there is a specific uh, guidelines for these species. I think it's also favorable for, for them. You mentioned you had an expert on, on pests and diseases, but in your talk you mentioned you were having problems with Phytophthora. Yeah. And I was wondering if the Phytophthora are attacking the Pinus species or the Quercus species or both? Maybe the Quercus. Maybe the Quercus. Also the Pine species, but were they identified the first uh, intensive? Uh, this process I have shown you uh, for the Pines. They occurred before for uh, for the corpus species, for corpus silex and corpus suet, for the corpus and the, I don't know, the corpus silex, which is the name in this. It occurred following an extreme drought period that occurred by the beginning of the 90s. So in the pine, there was not effects of the decay, but they start to appear in the corpus. And what they identified was the phytophthora. I think that what they were not able Indicate that was the main agent, but, but what they identified were uh, interaction between climate and barbie tails uh, and other uh, things. I was interested in your the mixtures um, and if you have identified some mechanisms that uh, of facilitation that would explain why those mixtures are working better, both resistance and for recovery after drought. 
Y, 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 y this case we are a bit speculative because we have not made any specific research on, on the topic. What is identified to the phenology of, of these species are, are quite uh, different. For example, what uh, uh, the phenology and the functional responses. Uh, uh, I work always with, a, uh, I cooperate with an official there. They have made, uh, uh, for example, uh, studies on the response in terms of meta simulation and photosynthesis. While the pinos in, in summer, it's, uh, their stomachs are, stomach are closed. So the species trying to save the, 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 the low water, the of water that we are facing. Uh, Quercus is still uh, making its activity, so it's able to uh, have a vegetative activity in the, in the, during the, the summer period. And also it's related with the, uh, with the root systems. Let's say uh, in that case I'm, I'm not very uh, aware that that's true, but it's true that the system of, of uh, stone pine is quite um, Superficial, except the main, the main root, but the rest is quite su superficial and extended. While, for example, Quercus has a very deep uh, root and also exits are splitting species. These are these, uh, uh, I don't know, the name, you say, this big root where the, the suits will, will elongate. So there are species that I think are, have some kind of complementarity in the, for the using of the, the resources. But in other topics, for example, I think there is uh, some facilitation effect over the related to the to, to the leaves or the chemi chemical quality of leaves that I have heard about the mixtures. In this case, we, we are not really aware of. of. So, so just a, a sub question on that same topic. Uh, so when you compare to more specific stands, this is a kind of a mixed mix uh, forest stand. Uh, if you were to compare to uh, Carcus, Ilex, uh, Ilex, monospecific stands, you get even a better performance in the mixed stand, the conifer, or the stands? We, we have, or it's, it's, it's for, for this species, we have not carving. We, we are carving studies on, on the mix of Pinus pinus and Pinus pinna. In that case, we have this kind of pure, uh, pure sand, pure forest, pure forest, and mixed forest. Yeah. And it seems that there, there exists this, this effect. So it's better the production in the mixed forest, forest than for the pure forest of the other three species, and also for other species as pinus silvestris and fagus. We have found uh, this this uh, this process that, that, that I think is quite common nowadays. In, I don't know here, but in Europe, there are many uh, forest researchers that are focusing on this topic of, of the major and productivity and major resistance in the mixed forest than in the pure forest. In our case, we have not covered this in the purpose the Phoenix forest or the Jupiter forest because it's really to find uh, really difficult to find pure forests of purpose and individuals in, yes. in this area. So it's not an effect that the conifers are just hell adapted, and as soon as you mix them with any yeah. in, in, in a, uh, angiosperm like Quercus, then it's going to grow better because you just have more Quercus mm -hmm. per hectare than in a pure conifer forest. It's really the yeah, it's, it's, it's not, it's not that the mixture is better for the species, but less for the conifer, it's growing better. Than, yeah. Yeah. We, we still have a real conifer-oriented objective in the, in the, in the management, because it's, it's which is providing the purpose for it, uh, after so intensive management, we, it has been suffering during centuries. Uh, the unique uh, production objective is the full food. Nowadays, it's maintained as a, as a core piece. But uh, it's difficult, it is a way, in other areas of so explain it's really easy to find these uh, pure purpose forests. But in this area, it's difficult to, to identify a pure purpose in forests or pure universe forests. Any other questions? No? But it's a non violent question. But you mentioned. The thing was maybe with Venus Pinesta, uh, you were giving figures uh, you know, of the revenue for lumber yeah. and also the revenue for resin. Yeah. I was wondering if, uh, so how does resin extraction go about? Do people extract every year resin from the same tree? Is it a sustainable activity? Yeah, it's, uh, 
it was a, a, a practice that was really done up to the 70s. And uh, it uh, was giving a large revenue to the, to the people. And it, it was, uh, there is not a, of course, there is an stress for the, for the tree. But the management is already focused to uh, it's a uh, 80 years transition. <coughs> the first 40 years the tree has to grow, and the last 40 years you are going to open um, five phases. Each phase taking five years, so you have the 25 years uh, rotation and then 15 years for the regeneration. But this activity completely stopped by the beginning by the mid 70s because of the competition with the prices of the resin gaming from China, and also from uh, chemical artificial resins for the carpenting and the, um, I don't remember the number of the other product. And um, that uh, uh, in the recent years, after the, uh, the economical price in, in Spain, he has been <laughs> in the, the same period that China has uh, increased his uh, average level of, 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 of life. So people are more consuming products, uh, beauty related products or domestic products that are the main uh, use of, of this resin. And also, and aware about the artificial resin, it has increased again the demand for natural resin, so it has started again. So it has changed completely now the, the management. The, the problem is that the timber, after taking the resin, the quality is much rapidly uh, uh, reduced. But uh, this uh, phenomenon of the kind it has been observed not only on, on tapered uh, trees, that it could be a reason because it's really that it's a distress, but it's also observed in non, non tapered trees, so it's, it's quite generalized. And I think there are these studies uh, by the moment comparing if there is an effect of thing that is like so going in both in the type of forest. Thank you. You, you didn't talk about fires. Is no. there any fire risk in the uh, Yes, yeah, well, uh, this region is, is not really uh, a high risk fire by the moment. If there are fires. I don't know if you know in the States, uh, the, the main problem of forestry, of the forest sector, is, is the fire. And in, in our institute, we have a specific uh, department focusing on, on forest uh, fires. And the main part of the budget that is uh, uh, west uh, nowadays in the forest in Spain is about to the uh, forest extinction, the forest fire extinction, so it's the main problem. But in this area, if you can see, uh, due to the conditions of the, of the forest and the territory, uh, you don't have any many over understory. The problem is that some of the new proposals for management, the maintenance of mixtures and the promotion of animal age uh, structures are, res uh, are going to lead to a most vulnerable forest, uh, to, to forest fire. So it's better for uh, the, uh, the conditions are better for the, for the screening of the, of the fire under these new, new conditions. So, this is a very problem, but in this area it's not the bigger problem nowadays, but it's also a big problem, of course. I'm just wondering how, to what extent you've worked with other countries, like some of France or Portugal, to develop common strategies, um, because you'll have many of the same common problems right now with uh, yeah, we, we have uh, been working. Uh, there is a European mechanism, perhaps uh, some of you know, it's called cost axioms. That are common research axioms. We have to have a uh, resident action on, on European uh, expected climate change and European the future. And uh, we also have uh, many research projects at the European level with, with other countries. In, in fact, in our institute, we collaborate with a, a Portuguese institutions in different topics. And uh, this is on the research scale and the more focused policy scale. I think that nowadays Europe is really cool. I, I think they are really concerned at political level. The problem is that I think that perhaps not always they are translating this concern at, at 
practical level, but we are really aware we do all our compromise, we are going to reduce our emissions, we are going to do this, and there is a, a wide plan for adaptation for the city work and living. But uh, in practice, at the, at the political level, I don't know if there is real cooperation at, uh, in this focus. Then there is a uh, cooperation in, in what is mitigation of climate change for new, but I think that general at policy level are more, more focused on, 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 mit on mitigation and carbon, carbon stocks and all this carbon yeah, amount of uh, balance of carbon and all these, all these issues that are more related to the high level of high scale policy. So uh, I'd like to thank uh, Rafael for the presentation. Uh, thank you. And a little that barbecue step that has been today at 5 hours, and has given the conditions of the meeting. We're going to return to my past students, and the barbecue will be held at the cafeteria of the Fabio Abitibi Prize.